It's been 10 years, hard to believe. Those images taken inside the East Grand Beach Resort, known back then as the Radisson. It was Hurricane Dolly. Good evening, I'm Tim Smith, and welcome to Facing the Fury. I'm joined by the entire First One Five Storm Tracking Team, the largest and most experienced team in South Texas. Today, we're going to give you the information you need to get ready for the storm, survive the storm, and clean up after the storm. We'll take you to Rockport, ground zero for Hurricane Harvey last year, and share with you the lessons learned by the residents of this hard-hit community. We'll tell you which aspects of the storm are most likely to impact you. If you're on the coast, it's not just the wind, but the deadly storm surge. If you live inland, flooding from the heavy rain brought by a hurricane can bring your life to a tragic standstill. We'll show you what areas are most vulnerable. And if your home floods, are you covered by insurance? We'll tell you what you need to know with an insurance checkup. And finally, we'll take you up close and personal with the men and women who fly into hurricanes and the machines they use. We'll show you how they get critical information about the storms to us so we can better prepare for the fury of the hurricane. The experts at Colorado State University updated their seasonal forecast on May 30th. You can see the numbers. Dr. Phil Klotzbach says a lot of what happens in the Atlantic during hurricane season has to do with El Nino in the Pacific. In the Atlantic, your low level winds blow out of the east and your upper level winds tend to blow out of the west. So you have a little bit of a shear in the vertical. Low level winds one direction, upper level winds the other direction. If you have an El Nino, it tends to mean stronger upper level westerly winds. So you have more shear, which that tends to tilt the hurricane circulation and disrupt it. Of course, it really doesn't matter what the forecast calls for. Because even if you have one hurricane, if it, if it hits your area, it was a busy season. While the wind is a part of the hurricane everyone always talks about, the most dangerous part of the storm is usually the storm surge. Strong winds aren't the only threatening force in a hurricane. The greatest threat to life actually comes from the water in the form of storm surge. Storm surge is a dangerous force during a hurricane where strong winds drive ocean water onto the shore in large amounts. This phenomenon is also the leading cause of coastal flooding during a tropical weather event. And while we can't prevent storm surge from happening, we can prepare for it. Civil engineering professor at UTRGV, Dr. Jun Siak Ho, says how important it is to not only prepare for such an event, but to be able to predict it accurately. Because of the hurricane, hurricane has really high speed wind, and the wind is pushing the water, especially in the shallow water, like Lebanon Madre. And uh, when the this, uh, hurricane is pushed the, uh, the water, the, like, uh, the other side will be overflow. And if the, the other side is the shoreline, that means uh, the shoreline is going to be flooded by ocean water. Storm surge can increase the water level by 30 feet or more. Combining this with heavy winds, waves, and tidal levels can lead to eroding buildings, roads, and major bridges, causing big problems for emergency management. Based on the dissimulation result, we can make a, a better plan, accurate plan, and accurate management. That's the, that's the benefit of the, this model. He's in the works of developing a storm surge model specifically for the Rio Grande Valley's shoreline. The final output of the, this study, this modeling study, is we can estimate how much of the uh, water depths around the shoreline going to be flooded by storm surge. When the model is done, it will have a total of 45 different scenarios officials can run through to make a decision on an action plan. And then in that case, we can expect a uh, simulation result five days before or even just kind of three days before. This will help emergency management coordinators like South Padre Island Fire Chief Doug Fowler develop plans for evacuation and preparation before a tropical storm. As a city, the way we prepare is that we, we plan for an event to happen. South Padre Island only sits around eight feet above sea level. Chief Fowler says when it comes to storm surge, that eight feet doesn't do too much to protect you from flooding. Wave heights from storm surge can be up to seven feet tall if the conditions are right. Chief Fowler says all you really can do to beat storm surge is prepare. Chief Fowler is right. When a storm surge is threatening the coast, preparation is key. We have uh, businesses on the island that has to prepare. Some of them are out on the beach. We're talking with them saying, OK, you're going to have to get your equipment off, if, if, you know, depending upon what the meteorologists are telling us. What I do is I secure everything on the outside. And then if there's anything on the ground floor that I'm really concerned about, uh, then I try and move it off of the floor. One of the best things you can do is to prepare your home. Grab sandbags and board up windows, especially if they're facing toward the coast. 
You should also be prepared to leave in case there's a mandatory evacuation. If we know it's going to flood, we want people out of here. We want to get off the island, let Mother Nature do what it's going to do, and then come back and rebuild. Remember, storm surge can cause coastal flooding in a matter of minutes, depending on the category of hurricane, and you may not have time to prepare last minute. While storm surge flooding affects people at or near the coast, flooding of a different kind can disrupt lives far inland, well away from where a hurricane makes landfall. When we come back, we'll talk about inland flooding in the valley and tell you if your home is in a vulnerable spot. We'll be back after this.